In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good that we are here. Today, on this day where we celebrate a Mass in this violet color for one reason, is because we are asking God for one grace. We want peace. Peace is what we want. This Mass, as your good pastor said earlier this week, is all about suing for peace. We're suing for peace. We're beseeching God in these our days that he would grant peace to us. If you're here today, it should be because you believe peace is possible. If you don't believe peace is possible, then you'll soon find out in a deeper way how it is possible for us to attain even here and now in the midst of so many things that are going on. What is this time all about? It is as though we are granted another three days of rogation. Not the normal rogation days that fall within the season, as your good pastor has spoken to you on many occasions, has led you in many beautiful processions throughout. This is a special time of rogation. We're praying over and over again for this grace of peace. It was not long ago where this particular place was very far from peace. It was just a couple years ago, which seems like a great while, given the circumstances of these past years, where there was great riotousness here upon our gates. St. Francis de Sales is a great saint and doctor of the church, and he once reminded you and I this about what we're asking God for in peace. You see, the center of our peace is the center of our entrance into the holy sacrifice today. It's all about he who's really present here for us, which is our Lord in the Eucharist. St. Francis de Sales says this. He says, quote, the Eucharist is the sacrament of love. It signifies love. It produces love. Oftentimes when we see secular processions, if you can call them that, they at least technically fit the definition of processing going forward, although some would say maybe they're going far backward. When these secular processions go forward, oftentimes in the midst of something that they perceive a slight, a tragedy, in some way they'll go around saying, familiar phrase, no justice, no peace. I've heard that before. No justice, no peace. Justice never brings about peace. Never ever brings about peace. It's impossible for justice to bring about peace because justice is, as St. Thomas speaks about, is finding out what is due to a person to whom it is due and making sure that amount is returned. And what that always leaves, justice always does, is it does set things aright. It's a mathematical mean. You can always know, if you know enough of the facts, how much is due to whom it is due, when it is due. But it always leaves the aggrieved party restored in some way, maybe. But then the party who has done the violence feels aggrieved because something was taken from them. And so begins another violence they feel that they might need to enact again and again. Justice doesn't bring about peace. There's only one thing which brings about peace. That's love. Love brings about peace. It is by love that we see that our neighbor is not somebody who is distant from us, somebody who we struggle against, somebody who has something that we ourselves are lacking at this time. It says that my brother is more important than this other thing, even if he's the one who took it from me. What love means is that I have to go beyond what is due to my brother and give him 
even what's not due to him. That's why our blessed Savior, when he walked upon this earth, spoke to his disciples and said, why do you treat one another like those in the world treat one another? I tell you, if a man demands that you take up his things and walk with him a mile, walk with him a second mile, give him that which is extra. If one demands your tunic, well, give him also your cloak. And it is by taking that step further that you bless him in something which is beyond that you throw off his entire world and make him see that his violence against you is something that you welcome because you see that there's something greater that you're after, more than material possession, more than my rights, my justice. You see that there's a soul which is there. You see, our saint today was always solicitous for souls, meaning vigilant to bring souls to Christ. We were remarking today upon our walk about one of the curious things that's written about the annals of the life of this blessed man, Alphonsus de Liguori. We spoke about and wondered, how could it be that he could actually say, as he vowed as a young man, that I will never waste a moment of my life? It will all be spent at work, doing, acting, always for the good. To make a promise such as that, one always has to have their eyes vigilant and focused on what is most important. To see even in the most mundane of activities that there's an opportunity, especially when we're in the presence of others, what might this other have a need or a desire for? What might be their lack which is going on within them? As I see them yelling at me, working out their frustrations against me, maybe even making unclean gestures toward me. What's going on within the soul of someone so aggrieved? What do they need? And in absorbing that wound, as our Lord says, when they strike you upon one cheek, then turn to them the other, is an opportunity for us to sue for peace within their souls, which is to find a place for love to exist, that which we receive here and adore here in the Eucharist, Christ himself. St. John of the Cross has a beautiful saying upon this, great doctor of the church, great man of faith, just like the man who we are lauding this week, St. Francis de Sales, is a great spiritual master. It says something that can help you and I go forward when there is a lack of peace within our lives, within our world, within our hearts. One thing that we can do to be able to aright, bring the situation aright is to follow his words as he says, if you find a place where there is no love, maybe we could say a place where there is no peace. This blessed saint, doctor of the church, says, find a place where there is no love, Put love there. And then you will find love. There. What does it mean to say that? It takes a little bit of explanation. If you find a place that lacks love, what you do is you ask God, who's love itself, for a greater grace of his love. And you say, God, I have no love for this person. I have no love for these people. I have no love for this one who is tearing down and disturbing peace. But you do, Lord. So I ask you who is love to put yourself all the more in this one. And so I make my petition in this. God, place your love in this one. And then... By making such a petition in this way, brothers and sisters, what you will begin to see is that God answers such a prayer. And by your intercession, places a love there and opens your eyes so that you can see, you can see what love is. That there is something even within one who has been so twisted, even when, when someone who has been so disturbed, even with somebody who has been so beaten up by the world and by their own actions there is something indeed that is lovely, God-stamped, God-graced within. 
And that can be enough for you to begin an act, making an act of faith in God's work there so that you can see that there is indeed love. This is the peace for which we are suing God for at this time. The Eucharist is the sacrament of our love. We're here adoring him during this time. It signifies love as Francis de Sales says, and so it produces love. So when you look upon your lives and maybe those who attacked you or assaulted you or exalted the things that are so important to you, maybe even our faith, this church, here before us, what we adore during this time is love. And so he produces love. And ask him for a greater grace of love for that one who has so deeply wounded you in this way. You see, as we approach this particular altar table which is here to receive the Blessed Sacrament here, Christ's body, we're embracing his boundless love and mercy which brings comfort and peace to our weary souls. In 2 Maccabees, we find something which is very interesting here, which reminds us of the significance of the altar and the offerings that are granted us here, the Eucharist. It's not merely something which is symbolic, a gesture, but is a real substantial encounter with our Lord. That's why St. Francis de Sales says in another place, there is no means more powerful to obtain the grace of perseverance than receiving the Most Holy Eucharist. When you and I feel like we can't make it a step further or life becomes too burdensome or it seems like we don't know what the next step is or maybe we don't matter or maybe it feels like life is just not worth living anymore. Indeed, that is the moment to make that act of faith and to come to approach the altar worthily after making a holy confession. The Eucharist grants the grace of perseverance. So when we approach the Eucharist with hearts that are full of gratitude for this gift, trusting in the words of St. Francis de Sales, he says another thing. He says, quote, God desires that we should receive Holy Communion as if we were receiving Christ himself. That means to receive him with faith, recognizing that he really is substantially actually there, and because it is receiving him, it renews and changes everything that he touches converting even our own nature into his own nature through that beautiful grace of divination which he works within us who receive him. By doing so, what we do is we open our hearts to the transformative power of Christ's love which brings peace that surpasses all earthly pleasures. Indeed, as we will speak again later, that it surpasses even all of our understanding. This gospel passage, what we do is we witness the scene of the apostles as they looked in fear after the crucifixion of the Lord. They were hiding behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. And Jesus, in his infinite mercy, appears among them and offers peace. Peace be to you. Then beginning to show his wounds, which are a testament of his sacrificial love and a source of true peace. Our saint today, St. Alphonsus the Gory, once said this, quote, Jesus Christ instituted the blessed sacrament after his resurrection as a visible sign of our love, his love rather. He declared that in the blessed sacrament, Jesus loves us so tenderly that he doesn't even wait for us to pray to him, to come to us. That his love for us is so great and so moving outside of himself is he that when we have need of him and approach He's already begun to work the work within our souls. That can be encouraging, an encouraging thing for you and I when we don't know how to pray, what words we are to offer when we come before him. He's already begun working and eliciting that movement within us just by entering into his presence. That's why blessed Thomas, who did doubt that day, he found peace by fa- and faith by encountering the risen Christ, touching his wounds, In the same way, so do we find true peace and strengthen our faith in the Eucharist. St. Alphonsus the Gory encourages us, saying, quote, Go before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, and there you will find all the treasures of his divine heart. And so whatever it is that we find ourselves in need, it's there, it's here, he's present. And he unfolds it all for you and I if we but sit with him long enough 
the desire will be all the more elicited. Let him do the work. See, the Eucharist is not a mere symbol. It's actually his true presence, his body, his blood, his soul, his real divinity. And when we receive him in the Eucharist, we're united intimately to him who is the very prince of peace. St. Alphonsus Liguori affirms, quote, In the blessed sacrament you will find Jesus, most tender, most loving, and most compassionate. So even whilst we feel unworthy to approach him here, he tenderly and lovingly moves toward us and reveals his passion to us so that we might not fear when we have so many wounds within our flesh. He shows his wounds to us. That's why he says in that blessed passage, John 14, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. He was the Prince of Peace. In this world, there is full of turmoil and uncertainty, but the Eucharist is a place where we can find sanctuary, where we can find a refuge, as we spoke about on our first Sunday together, a refuge of peace, a safety that transcends all kinds of understanding. St. Francis of Sales seeks to move you and I to a deeper place of interiority to be alone with the Lord. He shares these words. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, not even if your whole world seems to be upset. That's the most important thing to be laid before you, the grace of an internal peace. In fact, it's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, meaning where the Spirit is, his spirit of peace remains. He first plants love, the first fruit, That is to say, knowing that you are loved by God, the first and most important necessary fruit. And from that knowledge of of the fact that you're loved by God, it elicits a joy within you that is so far deep down within you where Christ dwells himself. And that joy allows you to have an interior sense of peace, that God desires your salvation and so nothing else can ever disturb that. That's why if the whole world seems to be upset all around us and all sorts of malice and blasphemies are uttered even at the edge of the property, let not these things disturb you. Stay interior where Christ's peace is, for nothing can touch that inner cell of sanctity within. The Eucharist serves for us as a source of strength, an inner calm, allowing us to face all of life's challenges with a sense of fortitude and serenity of soul. Indeed, our world is often filled with doubts and uncertainties, and Jesus gives us the Eucharist as his remedy for the changing evils of this present age. So the Eucharist, for you and I, does something. It anchors us. It's an anchor for our souls. And that's why St. Alphonsus Liguori has this to say about it. He says, quote, The blessed sacrament is indeed a stimulus for us all. For me, as it should be for you, to forsake all worldly ambitions. And so as those winds blow you left and right, as those waves seem to toss everything within your soul in every direction, it seems like the whole world is coming down all around you. Let the blessed sacrament anchor you down to those deep waters where even in the midst of all those things you can remain still and calm, recognizing that Christ your Lord is indeed within the boat, even if it seems like he's sleeping for a time, as the apostles saw. Why are you and I here, and what are we here to do? St. Alphonsus the Gory reminds us of this one thing. He says, quote, How pleasing to Jesus is the short quarter of an hour that we steal from our occupations, from something of no utility, in order to come away and to pray to him, to visit him, to ask him pardon for us, we who are poor sinners. Whatever time you are able to spend with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament is time valuable, is time of grounding, is time of allowing the needs and cares of the world to drift away so that you can all the more center yourself on where your anchor truly lies. Here we sue for peace. Asking him for peace within his church as the prayers of the Mass go, asking him for peace within our souls, and asking for him that he would bring a deeper sense of peace to all things that pertain uh, to his holy church here. As we turn to our Lord who is truly present with us in this blessed sacrament, calling upon all his graces that are here with us, let's also ask for peace.
for our enemies. To see not only that their lives must be set aright by justice, for them to get their just desserts, but when we find a lack of peace within them, to see that they are fellow souls that have an eternity laying before them, the Lord God desires for them to enter into heaven. And when we find a total lack of love, of piety, and of all things of good grace within them, to do as St. John of the Cross speaks, you find a place where there is no love. Place love there. And then, brothers and sisters, you and I will find that very same love. Or we can say, as the Mass prays for, we can find peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.